What's up, YouTube? I'm DeFresh here. Uh, hitting you with a vlog because the rims are in. So it is Thursday, the 27th of April. Yeah. Um, I'm on my way to the rim and tire guy. Um, it is a place in Wall Township called Edwards Tire Center. I just talked to uh, my guy up there, Jimmy, and he's mounting and balancing. So we're gonna go grab him, see what happens. We're here. I see a really big wheel from here. Probably can't tell on the video. Well, different machine. Yeah. Now this new. Oh yeah, look at that. Pretty big. We say uh, mucho grande. Mucho grande, hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right, YouTube, Adam DeFresh. Some time has passed. Um, I believe the last time I was recording for this vlog, it was the 27th, last Thursday. It's now the second. So that's it's Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, five days later, five days has passed um, and we have had some serious troubles. Before I take you out to the driveway to show you uh, what we what we're at now, um, we're done. Don't get me wrong. I don't stop till I'm finished, no matter what the problem is. But um, it's been a frustrating five days. So I got the wheels in. I vlogged picking up the wheels. Same vlog. This is going to be the same video, but there's been a five-day gap in between the last clip and now. Um, I went and picked up the wheels. Brought them home, slapped them on, took the car for a ride. The steering wheel was literally bouncing between 10 and 2 going down the road like this. Just bouncing. Um, the whole front end of the car is shaking like this. You hit the gas and it speeds up. You slow down, it kind of slows down like this. You make a turn and it shakes like this like crazy and then it slows down like this. Uh, didn't feel like a, a wheel issue. Matter of fact, I swapped wheels. Still did it. It felt like a drivetrain issue to me. Past two vlogs installing universal car lifts, um, strut lift for the car. 
I was bragging and saying, you know, how great they were and how easy it went in. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the kit, but it is a universal application. I called the company, pulled back in the driveway, confused, called the company. Um, once again, I'll say I've always had trucks, done trucks with truck suspension. The Caprice, the blue Caprice, has the same suspension basically as this truck. A-arms, full frame. That's the closest thing to a car I've ever owned, and it has the same suspension as a truck, basically. So that Buick is the first thing I've ever messed with with struts um, that I've owned, anyway. I've put air cylinders in cars, I've put hydraulic systems in cars, um, I've done lowering kits, coilovers, all that stuff. I've made Honda Civics lay on the ground, and I have not had this issue before. So I called the company and I said, dude, the car's wobbling like crazy down the road, shaking, especially as you accelerate. He says to me, I quote, oh, that can happen on certain applications. You are binding the CV joints. I said, okay, so what do I do with this sort of problem? What do you guys do when you run into this problem with binding CV joints with only a three inch lift? He says, um, they sell a drop member for the transmission to drop the whole transmission down to meet the joints so everything lines up straight. Uh, very expensive and a very intense install to where I said, F that, let's figure something else out. So here we are five days later. As you can see on the ground, there's the universal strut lift. I actually uninstalled the entire lift. Ripped the whole car back apart, um, spring compressors, pissed off, took the whole lift out, put the car back stock. No more wobble, drive straight down the road, beautiful ride, you know. I put this stuff in, and it rode like crap. Drive train, felt like the trans was going to blow up. Uh, it's, it, it didn't work. It didn't work the way I thought it was going to work. So, I also said that I would be vlogging. You see, we got the, um, I've been working on things mess to clean up. Um... I said I would vlog a bunch of things that I have not vlogged in the past five days because in the process of being pissed off that this wasn't working, I did do other things to make myself feel a little more chipper about the situation. So um, on other subjects, I had mentioned we were going to do an install on TVs, headrest TVs. Well, the company I ordered the TVs from, they sent two boxes. I ordered two TVs. So this is the story, really quick. Um, as I'm screwing around with the struts, putting the stock suspension back in, not happy, UPS pulls up with the TVs. I take the box out. I take what I, I say while I'm waiting for the air tools to fill up, while I'm you know doing other things. Let me take a look at these. I open the box. There's two boxes in there. I ordered two TVs. I put one box on top of the truck right here. I put the other t box on top of the workbench right here. Then I went back out, I started uh, spring compressing and doing other things with the um, air tools and all that. Now I'm waiting again for the air to build back up. I come back inside, I open up the box on the workbench. I look through. Let me see how this thing slides into the seat. So I take the stock headrest out, I slide one of the TVs in, fits perfect. Later that night, I said, you know what, I'm going to slide the other one in. I slid it in. I said, you know what, wiring it shouldn't be bad. I know I said I'd vlog it, but it was like 11 o'clock at night. I wired them up really quick, they worked. Power negative video wire, super easy. Um, if I get back into it, I will vlog. It's just been a frustrating couple days where I haven't vlogged. I've just been trying to do some things to keep myself not so um, pissed off that this lift is terrible. Um, so, I'm all done, TVs work. I go to throw the box and the packaging from here outside and as I walk past this truck I go to grab the box that was up there forgetting I never even opened it and then I opened it and realized they sent me four TVs I got two by mistake so I got four so I said to myself self what do I do with these two other TVs um, I thought about my wife's Kia black interior these are gray leather this uh, the, the headrests don't come out you know every other thing that I own it wouldn't work in so I peeled the back seat back. I found the, the metal brackets behind the back seat. Mind you, the Buick does not have headrests in the back seat. I mounted them in the back seat. 
might be ridiculous to some people because nobody can watch them besides the car driving behind me. But I got two extra TVs and I didn't know what to do with them, so now there's four headrests in the car. Um, four headrest TVs in the car. So that's another thing I'm about to show you. So, what I ended up having to do with this Buick was I put the stock suspension back in. I got the wheels on there. I saw what's going to rub, what's going to touch. Um, like I mentioned in the other video, you can put 24s on a, on a car like this without doing this big old lift, which I ended up taking back out. You have to bend the strut plate, the bottom strut plate. I'll show you on this one. This plate right here, the tire is going to touch on a stock strut. Uh, the tire is going to hit right here. So you have to bend this plate up. You put a jack in between this plate and in between um, the spindle down there, here to here, and you just jack it up a little bit. And this plate bends up a little bit. And you just jack it up a little bit, test fit the rim, still rubs right here. Then you jack it up a little bit more, test fit the rim. You keep doing it until you could fit your finger in between. You know, you don't need much room. This moves with the wheel. So, uh, you know, two quarters. If you can fit two quarters in between the tire and this plate, you're good. You can put the wheels on and you're, you're rolling, you know. Um, so I stuck a jack under there. I bent this plate up. Um, it's frustrating because I felt like this time I was going to do it the, I don't want to say the right way, but I was going to do it the by the book way. Order the parts. Install the parts. Put on the wheels. That's the way you're supposed to do it. The way I've always done it in the past is I've always looked at things and said, if I move this, cut this, weld this, change this, it'll work. Saving money. And it's like you did it yourself, customized. Well, I bought the right, I bought it the way you would think you would do. You buy the lift, you do the right thing, you put the wheels on, you're good. Took it all out and I did it Adam's way, the way I've always done things. You look, you figure things out, this needs to be longer, that needs to be shorter, this needs to be bent, that needs to be cut. You try things, you weld things. It's the way I've always done things. I took this stuff out and I did it my way and now the wheels are on the car. It's not a, um, it's not a Caprice look. It's not a big old Caprice, but the rims are on there. They don't rub. Full turn, they don't rub. My way. So, I'm going to take you out and I'll show you some things that I've done to get this car um, on 24s, no rub, without universal car lifts, binding struts. And to be honest, now that I've done this, I feel like the Caprice looks right the way it is. Big, bigger tire, different offset. Um, it's not a donk, but more of a donk look on the Caprice. Where this car here is more classy, even though it's not like an Audi or a Mercedes. To me, it's more of a luxury car. Where the way it's sitting now, the way I set it up my way, um, I feel like it looks good. It's clean, it's refreshing, it's not um, wild, but they are still 24s. Um, so there you have it. 24s on the Buick, all polished up. Um, no universal car lift. Um, no um, strut changing, these are the stock struts. Um, those metal cups that we put in the back, I took those out too, and I'll show you what I did to get this to work. Um, for the front, simply, you go into Pep Boys. I'm going to show you some things that I, that I purchased trial and error. In the past five days, it's been wild. A lot of guys use these things. <laughs> right in the garbage. They're not garbage. But a lot of people use these things. And then this sits in the, t the coil. This sits in between the coil. You tighten the bolts up. Separates the coil. And then when you put the car down, it keeps a little um, less compression on the coil. And it'll lift the car up. These are pretty cool because you can fine tune your adjustment. You can let it down, let it up a couple times and tighten them up and down to what you want. Um, these put a lot of stress on one point on the spring. And especially because you have to put two on one coil, kind of puts a lot of stress on, on the coil. But they are cool for seeing what you want to do and what you got to do. Um, I use these basically to see how far up I can go without the joints binding. 
which on this car, it's really not much. Um, always go with the front, adjusting your front, lifting or lowering your front suspension first and then work with the back because the back is a lot more uh, workable. So I put these in there to get an adjustment to figure out how high I want to go. Then I realized that this version of Spacer, which I like much more, this is a rubber bushing that you basically just slide into the coil, in between the coil. This sits in, in between the coil and it doesn't let it compress when you put the car down, which in turn will make the car a couple inches higher. Um, I tried those metal ones to see where I wanted, and then I realized that these are going to bring me exactly where I want. It's rubber, so it doesn't squeak. It, it puts even pressure on the spring. And when you look in there, who invited you? And when you look in there, it doesn't look stupid. It, lo it just looks like, almost like it should be there. So, if we can see in here, I bent the shit out of that plate and I put the rubber bushing in there. Um, some other things I did in here while I was in here doing this, when I realized once you get everything all mocked up and you're good, rides good, and you got you know everything right, I like to go into the wheel well and do some, some work, especially with an open wheel like this. So what I did was, now we're inside the wheel, is I repainted the subframe, the stock color, that purple color. I repainted the ins inside there um, because I had to trim the pinch weld so you cut some some slices in it and then you trim the pinch weld there so the tire doesn't rub. I repainted the old, the whole inner the stock color again and then I repainted what would be black black again. I repainted what would be you know um, the subframe down there. Just a little painting. We ended up, if you remember the other videos, we ended up getting um, new sway bar links, so they look nice. And then I painted the brake setup. I like to stick with red, I don't know. I, like, I think red looks a little more, uh, I don't know, appealing when the wheel's spinning. And then we had to do a little, uh, a little trim here on the bumper. Uh, I'm gonna sand this down a little bit smoother, straighter and then hit the edge with some paint. But even, you know, I'm close now, but now that I just told you that and I'm back here, you can't tell. Um, but that's the only really cut I had to do. Full turn doesn't rub. Um, and for the back, I'm pretty proud. Um, I am an adjustable suspension guy, and for the back, painted the brakes, like I said, red. We painted the uh, the whole subframe the same color, and then the black and the wheel wells. Um, like I said in the past video, we have an air shock, an air strut here, air shock. I had originally the bushings in the back here; those are the ones that are in the garage. But I took them out, and I built. Let me get you in here. This is supposed to be a solid pole from here to here. So as the car gets a load, the A arm goes up, and it triggers this. Um, valve and this valve tells the car we're too low and it fills up with air this shock will fill up with air and then this will sit even then the compressor shuts off so I built a little uh, contraption here with some bushings and um, a turnbuckle so I can reach into my wheel twist this turnbuckle and then the car will sit higher then if I want it to sit a little lower so I'm kind of liking the way this car looks kind of sitting on the wheel wells. Um, I reach in here, loosen it down, and then it relieves some air from here because it thinks the car is now too high. It thinks the car is sitting too high, and then it lowers the car back down so you can ride it lower. But now we're taking a little bit of a ride and our wheel wells are rubbing. I go in there, I twist my little thing thing, and then it'll air up higher. Um, this thing will air up to like here. I mean like six inches. It'll air up and ride. Um, so right now it is not completely down, but when it's when it sits for a little bit, this will end up just about sitting right here. And then when I start the car up, it goes and it fills up a little bit higher than here. I got it running. 
and then it doesn't rub I roll the fender with a baseball bat um, if you don't know how to do that you can google you kind of heat it up with a heat gun or a hair dryer you stick a baseball bat in there you push down a bit and you just roll the bat back and forth until the pinch weld rolls up pushes up in there um, we're close but this doesn't turn so it doesn't rub not at all and if it does rub a little bit up there I twist my little thing goes up a little bit and then I'm good for riding then when I park um, I'm actually thinking about putting uh, as you can see there's a tiny little airline here that goes up to the air shocks so I trace them and I'm gonna put a T fitting and I'm gonna put one valve because it takes about I don't know two days for this thing to leak down and go back down to here um, so I'm gonna split into that airline and put a one-way valve just so that when I park I can flip that valve and just dump the air out of the shocks so when I dump the air out of the shocks the wheel will sit down here tighter and then when I start the car up to leave it'll and fill up to ride height then I drive and then when I park flip the switch it airs out um, so yeah I'm actually instead of making this like the Caprice I'm gonna go with a little bit of an adjustable suspension on it so it already has an adjustable suspension I can adjust the ride height in the back so um, yeah I'm actually very disappointed with Universal car lifts with them not having any information on their site about um, binding or possible binding when buying the struts now I'm sitting on the struts so if anybody is interested and they want to lift something as long as it's not a Buick it should work um, even though it says the application works for a Buick they could have, you know, wrote me or something or said, you know, that might not work so well or you might bind, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only person that's ever tried to do this on this, but um, in the end, I'm happy with the way the car sits. I'm happy with the way the car looks. I'm happy with the way the car rides. And I really didn't want something to be nervous, like that green thing in there. Every time I drive it, it's kind of work. You got to, you know, there's a lot going on with that. This, just a cruiser. So it's kind of cool. It worked out pretty well. So let me take you inside and I'll... Uh, I'll show you how the TVs came out. Oh. All right, so stereo-wise, what we did in this, um, like I said, I didn't really want the. Uh, this is this is a little much, a lot of bang bang, a lot of boom boom. Um, little TV. I put those TVs in this blazer probably 10 years ago. That was like hot shit back then. Now they're like these little four-inch screens. Um, but yeah, this has this has a lot of power. This this will rattle your ears. Um, but I didn't want that much in this and it turned out to actually be sounding pretty good So like I showed you in the past videos We got a double din Can you can you can you can you just Thank you um, We got a double din up here Slid the monitors and the headrests They slid right in sent the wires back so we got the two monitors back there and then like I said the extra set we put them in the back seats so um, honestly I think that from the front of the car I could be wrong when you look at the interior now it almost looks more luxury more high-end with headrests in the back um, cars with headrests in the back are usually luxury cars that have headrests in the back. This car had nothing, and now adding the headrests, I feel like it looks, uh, I don't know, more up to date, more, more, more nice, more nice, nice. But at nighttime, they're a little, um, they're a little bright, a little obnoxious. No tint. I don't really like tint on colored cars. I only like tint really on black or white cars. Um, so. Yeah, there's uh, five TVs in there now because they sent me extras. And then for the the boom boom, we got one 600 watt amp and just one 10 inch power base. Mounted all nicey nice, wires nicey nice. Um, and that's it, just one 10, which is small for me usually, but. It actually sounds pretty good. I would turn it up, but you know, it's a terrible representation on a video, but it sounds pretty good. So yeah, TVs went smooth. Um, everything works well. 
I wired the TV monitors to a power switch down here on my seat because of the simple fact that they are bright as hell at night. So I feel like if it's one o'clock in the morning and I pass a cop, I'm guaranteed to get pulled over. So I can just flip a switch and they power off. But um, yeah, but whatever I do next, now that I'm not so angry about the situation, I will vlog and um, keep you updated on car stuff. To be honest, I think we gotta get that going. It, it only really needs a full tune up and a full brake job, and then it can roll on the road. So I wanna get this going for this summer. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna be doing a lot of work to Vinny's Caprice, Vinny's Caprice. And uh, yeah. So yeah, for those that care, um, it is completed. Why are we so blurry? the hell camera's acting a fool whatever Buick on 24s maybe a two inch lift maybe a one and a half inch lift that's how you do it uh, if you watch my past two videos you'll learn what you can't do and I just showed you what you can do um, I say throw a turnbuckle in the back throw some rubber bushings in the front trim a little of the front bumper full turn no problem no no nothing else involved uh, grind grind the pinch weld back a little bit. Um, this is the pile of stuff left over from my nonsense. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one thing. This is the only thing that the um, this is the only thing that the tire was rubbing on. Never thought that that would be a problem, but this is my windshield washer fluid tank. It's in the, it's in the front bumper, and the um, you could see right there the tire was going to be rubbing on that. So, I'm probably going to do a video on how to relocate that. I'm going to get maybe a Jack Daniels bottle, something like that. Drill some holes in it for the sensors, and we're going to mount it somewhere else so we still have windshield washer fluid to get it complete again. But um, if you want to put 24s on your Buick, 225, 30, 24 inch tires. Um, I got rid of the windshield washer fluid tank for now. I took the inner, 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 inner wheel wells out, I trimmed the pinch weld on the front wheel well, I cut the front bumper to match the tire, I put a turnbuckle on the center for the back, and um, I put rubber bushings, spring boosters in the front. No turn, no, no, no rub full turn, not a problem. It's not a big old, you know, caprice, but... Um, but it's done. Whatever. Ready to roll. I'm Defresh. Thanks for watching. I'm out.